afternoon. Here we are. We're going to go to April 2020 in the book, I'm Not Okay. Um, once again, a little journal that I made during the pandemic and during the time of my collapsing of my mental health. So let's get to this one. Oh, I already forgot that this was the one. Okay, April 3rd, 2020. The dog day is coming. If you don't know what dog day is, the dog day was when I had to put both of my dogs down. It was very, so I called it dog day. Dog day is coming. I hate this feeling. I'll be fine. How bad can it be to lose someone? Question mark. Come on. How bad can it be to lose someone? To lose another being that means everything to you. To lose souls that you have rescued. To lose souls that have rescued you. To lose things that have a special place in your heart and soul. Let's be real. How the fuck are you going to get through this? You're losing your gym. You're losing your members. You're losing a piece of your family. You're losing your dogs. How the fuck can all of this happen all at once? It hasn't been a month yet, and the world as I know it is collapsing. Breathe, Pete. Breathe. But I can't. It's hard to breathe. I want to break from everything and anything. Self-note. Breathe, Pete. Just fucking breathe. I don't, I don't think I can move on. I don't think I can move on to the next to the next thing right now. If you you listen to all that, it hasn't even been a month yet, and I feel like I'm losing everything. It was pretty fast on how fast I lost everything. The speed of it, the the urgency of it, the segregation of it, the ghosting of it. Is that a term people use these days? Ghosting. And then my dogs. And nothing hurt more than that. Nothing. Because with the gym, you know, it, it was monetary, it was my career, something that means a lot. I already keep looking this way. I should look here, right? Because I keep feeling. I'm feeling now. So that whenever I look, it's because I'm uncomfortable. Right? Whenever I look away from this lens, I'm uncomfortable. Because those are your best, like, those are my best friends. People don't know this, but Switch, Switch was my little Jack Russell Terrier. He was my first, not my first dog. He's the dog that at the time I, I was medicated at that time. They just recently put me on medication and I had no idea what it meant to be, uh, to have bipolar, to have depression. I didn't understand it. I just know that my parents wanted me to go see a, a, a psychiatrist and the psychiatrist labeled me as X. Did I pay attention in the office? No. Did I care? No. Did I want to take a medication? No. Did I do it? Yes. So I took the medication and, um, Improperly, now that I know now, like all the things that you're not supposed to have or feel, I hadn't felt. I lost my vision. I I would get dry mouth. I would black out. So if I had like one drink, I would black. I don't remember the night. I don't remember anything. It, it's pretty interesting. The uh, I had like lithium toxicity. Is pretty much what they'll they'll call it. Um, but this time around, it's, it's a lot better. But anyway, um, switch. When I got switch, I got him from the Garden State Mall. Right, I, I was walking through the mall, and I was like, man, this fucking dog, like, he just, he just looks like it, you know? And then uh, there's another one who's like, like a beagle, and I was like, oh, look at this doofy, oh, man, okay. So I didn't get them, I didn't get a dog yet, but I did wait a week, and I said, I'll come back in a week, and if he's there, I'll play with him, I'll see what it is, and I'll get him. So I go back in a week, and they're both there. They're both in this whatever whatever store that you guys go to in Guard State Plaza that everyone went to just to play with, just to look at puppies, right? Fucking farmed puppies. Um, no rescue makes you rescue. Shut up, I know. I rescued him from the fucking mill, okay? I don't know what you want me to do. Sorry, I bought him from the mall. I'm sorry. My bad. It's 2003. Um... 
and they're both there so you get this little playpen that you can go into so they they put me in this little like you know cell i guess you call and they gave me the beagle and switch and they're both in there and um, the beagle just laid there and did nothing like not wanted nothing didn't like nudge my hand to be pet didn't bark at me he just kind of laid there with a droopy face and was like hey um, no, all right, perfect. And Switch was jumping all over my neck. He was jumping all over my, my, my legs, jumping into my lap. And that's what I knew. Like uh, that, that guy was mine. Signed the papers. I don't even know how much it cost. I think it was like $3,000. I must've been, I just put on my credit card. I didn't care. And I walked out with that package. They got me with like the package cage and everything, which he never used anyway. And, uh, you know, we always buy stuff when we first get a dog, right? We buy all this stuff. I'm going to get 17 squeak toys, three beds, one for upstairs, one for downstairs, and one for outside. And then I'm going to get a cage. I'm going to crate them. I'm going to crate train them, I swear. No, you're not. You're not going to do it. They're going to be sleeping in your bed really fast. They're going to bark at you all the time because we're terrible trainers, right? And I've learned that. But Switch was the guy, like, when I got him and in the process, I don't know what it was about it. I don't know if it was him being around me or me having to be in charge of something that I grew to love instantly helped me get off my medication, right? With all this, you know, all this stuff that was going on at that time. And I can clearly remember how miserable I was, 100% miserable, right? And we could all talk about being miserable because I was in a, a time in my life where I wasn't doing anything that I wanted to do. Right? I was just doing things that was expected of me. And we can talk more about that at some other time. Because we're talking about Switch right now. It's Switch time. And Switch saved me. You know, Because that was that point I was also suicidal. There was a point there that I was going to act on it. Did I tell anybody? No. I wrote a letter to one person. One person. And her name is Juliana. She was my friend. She is still my friend. But she was my friend at that time that I hung out with a lot. Um, and we just, it was like, you know, when you hang out with someone for like a short period of time. And I wrote this letter. And um, I remember I was going for, I got frustrated. And I was going for a walk. And I was on Franklin Ave. And every piece of me, every piece of me was just about to walk in front of a bus. I don't know. I don't know why. I just wanted everything to be done because I wasn't living a life that was worth it to me. And almost like by doing that, it would create, I don't want to say regret or even vengeance, but some type of like, what are you going to do without me type thing? And I was ready to go. I remember, I remember, I remember how intense Intense. I was actually listening to Juliana Theory. Weird, right? On my CD, on my CD disc man, while I was running the streets and then end up walking and I was just going to run right into one. Like I didn't. And then it was just like something called me again, you know? You hear voices, you hear voices, and there's this other voice that kind of just pulls you back. Your conscience, your angel, your yourself. I don't know what it is, but it called me back. And that was the first instance of, no, it's not the first instance, actually. <laughs> that was the second or third. That might have been the second or third. I want to say second time. I tried to, to do that. But Switch, like, came out of nowhere. And uh, his happiness, his joy, he was a maniac. Just kind of, it brought me back to life. It made me love more. You know, it made me appreciate people more. It brought my family together. He did. You know, he brought my, us together. Because we were all fighting at the time. Like, we were fighting. You know, me and my brother fought all the time. We argued. Like, Jay jumped out of a car once. It's fucking crazy. Me and my, I yell at my parents all the time. We get to like fights in the restaurant and I go outside and I break chairs and I storm out all the time, throw not it's it was really not good. And then we got Ding and Dong, whose whose name is Switch, and uh that guy like kind of just like poof, like binded us together. You know? Sure we fought, we argued here and there still, but like it wasn't as intense as 
as it was before him. So that's why it was really hard to, you know, that was like, he's literally my best friend, you know? And he's a guy that saved my dirty fucking teeth and stinky breath at the end. He saved me, man. You know, and I'll cry till this day. I want a mural down here of like all the talks we've had, but Nat doesn't want that <laughs> at the old apartment. Um, at the old apartment, he had like a bunch of dog pictures everywhere. And she's like, maybe not, you know, 3,000 pictures of them <laughs> in a mural. I was like, why not? Let's put fucking candles under them, put lights, make it look like the craft. That'd be fantastic. But anyway, that was a, uh, that's how I was feeling. And that's how April 3rd is like, it was the day before dog day. day dog day is 4 4. Bleh. I lost my best friend. Oh my God. That's the next one. So we're going to talk about that, but I won't talk about it too much because I kind of talked about it uh, today. But I remember just the hopelessness I had in in that day and just the how good it felt to cry because I wanted to cry, cried, 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 cried. It felt good to cry because there was no other, there's no more emotions. There was no more happiness. There was no sadness. There was no anger. You just felt numb. Numb. And it just felt good to cry because at least I was feeling something. Because that was a tough day. That was tough. Because I experienced that before my first dog. And I was there for that. Holding her down. Like I felt my, I had my first dog's name is Shannon. And I, when we put her down... She was like, go nuts. This is another story. I could go short. It'll give you a short version. She was going nuts. Um, oh my, yeah. I came home. I guess dogs like run frantically when they're in a lot of pain. She was in a lot of pain. So I rushed her to the, to the, um, the vet. It was raining. I remember it's in the car and I was like, everything's gonna be okay. So I brought her to the vet and she's a mean motherfucker so like she didn't like like people and touching her so she would always snap at them <laughs> once again trained by a seven-year-old us and then he was like she's in too much pain we're gonna put her down and i was crying i was upset i tried calling my my family to see it was okay but no one's picking up and i just made the decision myself and I remember, I was like, okay, do what you got to do. I didn't know, you know, I kind of didn't know what to do. So he went back, and then he came back out, and he was like, she won't let us touch her. You have to hold her. And I remember going in there and, you know, fuck, I remember her face. I remember her face. I remember her face right now, staring at me, looking at me like scared shit. It was a terrible way to go. I'm fucking counter so we, the stainless steel counter it smelled like dog shit and then they injected her with the first one and i like you felt the struggle like you've watched her struggle felt her and like you watched her i felt her go like i felt the body go and she still like fought a little bit and then i I felt her go again. And finally, she just, the tongue came out to the side and, and it was done. Wow, this is a really fucking terrible episode. <laughs> All right, guys, I gotta go because I can't take that. I'm supposed to be happy today. <laughs> now, <I'm kidding. laughs> I was feeling great until this fucking video. <laughs> now, I'm just joking. I, was, I felt good today. Now, I'm gonna go think about my dogs in a good way. All right, I'll see you later. Until tomorrow. Oh, wait. Before I leave, uh, do me a favor and, like, watch more videos because I'm trying to get monetized on YouTube, and this is real, where I'm trying to get monetized on YouTube so I can fucking make some money doing the things that I do and then things that I do love. All right, so with your help, by just leaving the video on and sharing this and making people watch it, I need to get 4,000 hours of watch time. I only have 300 right now for this year, so I'm trying to expand that as much as I can. I have every other mark. I just need that one to make it happen, and then hopefully it does happen. So with your help, if you can, share this video. Watch whatever it is. If you're you know, painting the house, 
press play and just leave it and then let it run into the next one and find another video when I press play. Even if it's from 2008. I think I started making videos like 2006. I forget. So I'll see you guys later. On that note, have a great weekend. Until next time, people. Should I do like an exit, like a walkout exit? Wait. Right, it'll be walking up, actually. Not walking out. Okay, no. And then I'll walk down. Here's the intro. Ugh. Ugh. What's going on, everybody? Is that a good intro? Right, cool. Welcome to PE Zips channel. Support by tapping that like button.